Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and for this video we're going to be talking about 1980s slasher movies one of the most popular subgenres in horror and pretty much the genre's bread and butter during the 1980s as the majority of these movies were churned out at the cinema and became really big hits following the success of Halloween and Friday the 13th. Now, unfortunately, not all of these movies were the thrilling roller coaster rides that we'd hoped for. Some of them had really boring killers, not many kills, and some of them just forgot to have anything happen in the movie altogether. So for this video, we're going to look at five 1980s slasher movies that were just way too slow. So first up, we have Blood Theatre from 1984, which may win the prize as the most boring movie in my collection. I've got some pretty slow films, but this one is pretty hard to get through. Coming in at just over an hour long, but you will feel every single minute of that hour as virtually nothing happens in this one. This is the story of some staff that work at a cinema and they're reopening this cinema but they are apparently being killed off by an unseen killer. But there's really not much to say about this one. It's endless shots of staff stood around talking, moving furniture around, moving a plant pot around in the lobby and that is about all you get from this one. There's a couple of quick kills towards the end of the movie. I think most of them are off screen. There is a killer in this one, but I can hardly remember what he looks like or if he even has a motive. But believe me, virtually nothing happens in this one. It's a terrible film. Now, director Rick Sloan, who was only a teenager at the time, he was only able to get this made by faking a 10-page script, which if you've not even got a 10-page script, I would suggest there's not much going on in this movie, which evidently there isn't. But that gives you some kind of indication as to uh, how little was put into this one. So yeah, Blood Theatre, a painfully slow and dull movie. One of the worst films I've seen released by Vinegar Syndrome. And unfortunately, it's that boring, I would say, to avoid this one at all costs. Next up, we have Death Screams from 1982. And I was so excited when I saw this one getting a release from Arrow. I would not seen it before. But it had really cool cover art, and I like the title as well, Death Screams. It's a pretty hard-hitting title, so I was really excited. But yeah, this one, another boring disappointment. Not far behind Blood Theatre in its just endlessly plodding plot. Mainly made up of uh, students and teenagers stood around talking. The movie starts off at this like carnival scene where they just stood around talking to each other. And then later on, they sit around in this graveyard telling stories. Now, the graveyard setting is pretty cool. That has a bit of atmosphere to it. But again, nothing happens during this movie. There's a few OK kills right at the end of this one. I think a guy gets his fingers chopped off, which was probably the highlight of the movie. But a uh, very underwhelming killer. Again, I've kind of already forgot what he looks like. No kind of obvious motive. Uh, and you're just waiting for the whole movie for any of those kills to get started. And, and by then, even though they were kind of okay, I just lost all interest in this one. So yeah, a big disappointment, unfortunately. Another really boring slasher film and one that I, I can't recommend, unfortunately. Even though it does have a cool slipcover and artwork from Arrow. Next up we have Fatal Games, which is actually a recent release from Vinegar Syndrome. And this one's a shame. I, I feel uh, sorry to have to include this one because it's a slasher film that's been unavailable for many, many years as has been a very sought after movie. And indeed, I myself have wanted to see it for a long time. So I was happy to see Vinegar Syndrome put this one out. But yeah, I've got to say this one was another slog to get through. This one takes place in this high school where a number of the students are training to try and get into the nationals within their respected sport, so that could be sort of athletics, swimming, javelin, shot put, that kind of thing. But there is a track-suited killer who's pretty handy with a javelin, going around killing them, killing them off one by one. Now, the killer in this one is pretty decent. I like the tracksuit look, and some of the javelin kills in it are done pretty well. Uh, but the kills in this one are just too few, few and far between. 
the majority of the movie is spent again with the the, the students and kind of their love life and their sort of the sports side of things, which uh, just goes on for a bit too long. And although again, the killer was pretty cool, it's almost like the killer in this one is just incidental and they kind of occasionally shoehorn scenes of the killer prowling around as and when they think about it, rather than the killer having any kind of presence or menace and really kind of going after everyone. So, yeah, again, just a bit too plodding throughout in this one. have to say as well, the transfer on this one is really poor. Not the best job from Vinegar Syndrome. It's very, very dark and grainy, and it seems as if Vinegar Syndrome have just kind of upscaled the graininess of this one. So whether that added to uh, to my sort of not liking of this one. Um, but yeah, there's a, cool, uh, a couple of cool javelin-related kills in this one, but you've got to get through a lot of dialogue and student relations until you get to them, unfortunately. Now, throughout the movie's production, Fatal Games was actually titled The Killing Touch. And in fact, when the movie was finished and cast members were asked about their time on Fatal Games, they actually didn't know what people were talking about and denied that they were in the movie, thinking it was a different film. But now it is more well known and we know it as Fatal Games. Uh, but unfortunately, although it's a nice release from Vinegar Syndrome, I wouldn't rush out to see this one. Next up we have Final Exam from 1981. And boy, this is one of the most what on earth were you thinking films that I've seen. It starts off with a kill inside a car, which makes for a promising start. But after that, the movie just gets really boring with nothing happening. Endless scenes of dialogue, student relations, student-teacher relations, and then silly pranks that you have to get through before anything happens. More on the pranks in this one in just a moment. The killer, when he finally comes into it, way after the hour mark, looks very, very plain. It's just a regular guy in a jacket. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't move much. It's easy to put down and from what I remember it doesn't really even have a motive for what he's doing. So really uninspiring. One of the most boring slashes that, that I've seen. Now while I'm talking about this film it would be remiss of me not to mention a couple of things in this. Which are just I have no idea why the people in the film who made the film included it. The first one is around a guy in the film who is clearly gay. He's very effeminate, uh, very camp, and I did look him up, he is a gay guy. And instead of the filmmakers having a bit of a light bulb moment and giving him a male love interest, which would have been quite interesting and quite forward thinking for when this was made, they just plough along with the movie and he actually has uh, a crush on a female student at the school. Now, of course... Anyone can like anyone, doesn't matter what team you're on, but it just makes for some peculiar scenes to see this quite clearly gay guy swooning over a female member of the school. And I actually feel quite sorry for him. Uh, so why they just went with that, I have no idea. But easily the most bizarre thing about Final Exam is one of the pranks that are played by some of the students at the school. A group of the students in this movie think it would be a great idea to fake a mass school shooting. So they pull up in a van, jump out, firing automatic weapons, and a few of the other students that are in on the joke fall about as if they'd been shot. And it's just like, what on earth are you thinking? And it's not funny. It's a really weird thing to put in the film. And, and even even in 1981, it seems like a very inappropriate thing to, to include and pass off as a harmless prank. And even more stranger, as a result of this prank, the sheriff in the movie, he, he gets involved and he wants to slap a few wrists of the people that did this. Quite rightly so, if, if you ask me. And the teaching staff are kind of like, Oh, lighten up, Sheriff. Oh, it was just a prank. Oh, I thought that was really funny. And it's like, who on earth wrote this and thought this was an appropriate thing to include on a high school? It's so bizarre and such a weird thing to come up with. And yeah, it just makes for a, a very strange film. Unfortunately, neither of these kind of crazy elements make the movie any more interesting. It's still one of the most boring slasher films 
that I've seen. Uh, so yeah, is is one that uh, you are not missing out anything if you haven't seen Final Exam. And finally, we have Terror at Tenkiller from 1986, which is another one released by Vinegar Syndrome. This is not a great indictment for any slasher films that were released by Vinegar Syndrome. But this one, these two women, these two friends, they go to this ten killer lake to have a bit of relaxation time. And there's a killer supposedly going around killing people. But again, it's just so slow with nothing happening. Uh, it's another one that's a bit of a chore to get through. Very few kills in this one. The women are menaced a little bit over the phone and when there's a killer lurking out in the woods. But there's no real kind of in-your-face kills or violence. Uh, and again, the killer just look, he looks so plain. It's just a regular looking guy. I don't know why they didn't sort of play around with his features more. Uh, it's always a bit of a disappointment when it's just a, a plain clothes guy that's doing the killing. The scenery in this one is pretty nice. The 10 killer lake, although it wasn't filmed exactly at that location, makes for some quite nice scenery and cinematography. But again, this is another sleeper slasher film, unfortunately, that you... You don't need to rush to see. So there we go, guys. That's five slasher movies that I think were just way too slow and boring. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you agree. If not, let me know which one of these movies you like and why you liked them. Am I missing something? Really interesting to hear your opinion on these movies. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.